Hi, welcome to the Robot Program. I'm DJ Schurz. And I'm Professor E. In today's episode, we're going to teach you how to take care and charge your battery of your Revolution robots. My battery is low. So let's go to the studio and check it out. Well, to charge your batteries, you're going to need a battery charger and, of course, your robot. Okay, so. Charger? Charger. And that is the other part of the charger. What do you got in there? Here is the transformer that allows the charger to get some power. Okay, so let's take the charger out. Let's take a look at this guy. Okay, so the charger is uh, pretty small. Fancy looking. Okay, and then we have the transformer as well. All right, so what country do you want to be from? What country? I am in North America, so give me a North American adapter. Okay. Oh, we got lots of adapters. Bring them over here so we can see on the screen. Look at that. Okay, so this is the one I want. And the uh, battery charger comes obviously with adapters for all these different countries. That's okay. great. So this is what I'm going to choose. So I'm going to slide this into the transformer here. Now I can plug it in. And then I want to get the transformer power, of course, or the uh, battery charger power by plugging this in. Okay, so the question is, where on the robots is the battery. Well, I have here two bodies of robots that haven't put together yet, which I'm going to demonstrate where they are. So on JD, you'll see these two wires, and these two wires are for the shoulder servos, they're not for the battery. This one, however, is for the battery. So this is what you're going to want to plug into the charger to charge the battery. So let's take a look at actual robots and see where and how you connect the charger to them. So let's grab JD, for example, to start. And you'll see here under his left arm, the wires are coming out, and we're going to want to connect the battery charger to here. Raise his left arm up, adjust the wire like so, and then simply position it in, and then use your thumb and connect it. Simple as that. And then to disconnect it, you're going to want to use two hands, lie them down, put your fingers on the edge of the connector so your nail into that, and just gently rock it back and forth, pull it out. Do that one more time, in and out. And do we need to worry about the other connector? The other connector is used for a different style of battery, which you won't find inside of Easy Robots. Perfect. So now we'll put JD back, and let's do the same with AdventureBot. Let's show you how to charge AdventureBot. So we'll lie him on his, on his back here with the connector, and you'll see the connector only goes on one way because it has little teeth the top up here. There you can see it. So now what we'll do is we're going to turn the connector around and do the same thing. Insert it in and plug it in. So it's a little bit of a different male to female connector than we've discussed in earlier videos where you are learning how to connect all your pieces to your Easy V. That's right. So with this type of connector it'll lock into place when it plugs into the charger. Now, let's take a look at another robot. Let's do six. Pass me six. So six, of course, is a hexapod, and he's got lots of legs, so we want to make sure that we can get, get in there. So again, put him down like so, and then you'll have the cable popped out here, and again, just reach up, insert it in, and then again, pull it out. And you're not going to want to pull by the wires to pull it out, because then if you do that, you can pull the wires right out of the plug. So you want to get your finger on the edge of the plug and just gently pull. Same reason why you never unplug your laptop by just pulling the cord. That's right. You should, yes. And don't do that if you're doing that. Don't do that. Okay, now we have Rolly. Rolly is a big guy. He's kind of heavy, a little bit bulkier. So how do we get charge into him? Well, if we flip him underneath, get the cable here, we'll reach up and we'll slide it in. And then, of course, Put our nail and our finger on each side of it and gently rock it out. So don't rush when you're unplugging these because you may feel like you want to grab the cable and pull it out. In which case, again, you may risk pulling the wires out of the plug and then your battery is going to have to get replaced. So one of the questions that people ask is where is the battery and what does it look like? So as we mentioned, it's inside of the bodies, so we happen to have one of the easy robot batteries here. 
So this is called a lithium polymer battery. And this, this battery has a connector in the end. So you'll see here, we have a piece of tape on it because it's brand new. Peel that off. There we go. And on this side is the, uh, the power that actually connects to the insides of the robots. So this is your charging piece, and this is the piece that connects to the, directly to the controller, to the fuse, and to the servos. So the only piece we actually see when we build our robots is this part right here. That's right. So let's take a look inside a JD. The actual body, or the battery, sorry, lies inside of JD just like this. And that's why it pops out on that one end. And then inside of the, uh, the hexapod body here, you'll see that it sits inside of here and it comes out there. Now you'll notice on both Rolly and um, the hexapod 6 body, you can actually take the battery out with a screw and you can pop it out. Let's take a look at the bottom of Rolly so we can show that as well. There you go. So you can see here that we can undo this screw and we can take the battery out to change it if we want to change it. The same for the hexapod body. However, with that, due to the, the complicated build and compact structure of JD's body, we weren't able to put a battery changing door anywhere. So the battery is permanently inside of JD's body. Now, you can, of course, change that, and there's a future tutorial which you can watch, which will show you how to do that. However, uh, you generally don't have to change the battery, you just charge it. So what rechargeable batteries are for. Now, on that note, we should discuss that every robot has a battery saving monitor built into it. So when the battery starts to die, and it gets below a certain voltage threshold, which you don't need to worry about, it takes care of it automatically, the robot will speak, and it will tell you that its battery is dead. My battery is low. How long does a battery normally last for? A battery can last up to an hour. It depends on how much activity you're, you're doing with your robot, of course. Now, if you hear the battery monitor speak and it says, my battery is low, you have to charge the battery. So right away, the very first thing you're going to want to do is turn the robot off with the power switch. Then you're going to want to connect the robot to a battery charger and let it charge its full cycle. That doesn't mean you can charge it halfway. You have to let it charge its full cycle because batteries have what's called a memory. And they don't remember and, and get mad at you for not charging them. It's not that kind of memory. It's a chemical memory. So when you charge a battery, it needs to be charged through a full cycle, and then you can recharge that battery thousands of times without having to worry about replacing it. If you don't pay attention to the battery monitor, the battery can actually get damaged, and it can do something called the Puffy Syndrome. And the Puffy Syndrome is when a lith lithium polymer battery, the gases inside of it, will actually expand, causing the battery to... There you go, there's a good example. This is a old, old battery that has been very abused. You can see the size difference. And if you push on it, you feel that. There's air trapped inside of there. It's a gas. And it's because of the chemical reaction that occurred because this battery has been killed off and let to die and then recharged and let to die again numerous times. Not very safe. Not very safe at all. So you want to make sure that this doesn't happen. And if you ever do see a battery that has gone puffy, you have to dispose of it. You can bring it to a recycling facility and you can check on the internet in your local area where you can uh, discard used batteries. I wouldn't suggest throwing it in the garbage. No, not a yeah. good idea. So one of these regular batteries here, how long does it take for this to charge? A battery with the charger can take up to two hours, sometimes three hours to charge. The charger is, has a microprocessor inside of it. So the charger actually has some brains inside of it, and it'll actually monitor how the battery is being charged based upon its voltage, and it'll figure out how much power to give to it to continue its charging cycle. So this charging cycle may vary, so don't think it's always going to be the same. Okay, last thing. We know that there are lights on the charger. Why don't you tell us what those lights are for? Yeah, definitely. So the charger has instructions on it which we can read here. Let me bring it up to the camera. There we go. You'll see here that it says, red light is the power on. So that light over here, which is red, will light up when power is applied to the charger. The charging red light on the charging side means that the battery is charging. So when the light on the charger side lights up red, it means your battery is charging. When the green light on the charging side lights up, that means your battery has completed charging. 
you'll see it, there's an arrow pointing to power and arrow pointing to charger. So red means it's still charging, green means it has completed its charging cycle. Great, so remember you want to watch for that green light. So thank you so much for watching this important video and we'll see you at the next activity. See ya. In this episode, we reviewed the charging and care of your robot battery. A couple important things to remember. When connecting and disconnecting from the charger, make sure that you don't tug on the cables and that you're using your thumb and your finger, especially your nails, to just touch the actual connector. So connector, not wires. The first time you charge, you want to make sure that you let your battery charge the full cycle. This is because batteries have a chemical memory and the next time you'll be able to charge it as much as you need to. You want to pay attention to your battery monitor, and if your robot starts telling you that it needs to be charged, make sure you turn it off and then go plug it in. We never want to charge our robots when they're still turned on. Don't get your robot wet. Treat it as if you would an iPad or another piece of electronics. For additional information, you can read the Getting Started Guide. Thanks for watching this episode of the Robot Program, and we'll see you next time. True or false, it is a good idea to disconnect the charger by pulling on the battery cable wires. True or false, the battery should charge for a full cycle during its first charge. What is the purpose of the battery saving monitor? Find the answers at therobotprogram.com.